Like if you're talking about as an actor in motion capture, mm-hmm. how that came about is when I done the film Legend of Tarzan mm-hmm. and I thought that I was only going to be a background warrior and instead I was auditioning to play the apes and I got the part and that's when I discovered about motion capture because I thought that all creatures were were done by special effects. I didn't think there was any humans playing them. So when mm-hmm. I discovered that, that kind of told me, all right, they really do do this. And that's this is what mm-hmm. I want to do because I love, I'm, I'm a movement person. So I love movement characters, creature type of characters. So for me, when I realized that you could play animals, and mm-hmm. so I said, yeah, this is where I'm going. Welcome to the show, actually. This is my first episode, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, for some time you've been popping up on my LinkedIn just through my connections, liking and engaging with your posts. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah it, for some reason, I, it, it didn't click on me for me to to connect with you, but eventually I, I, I did recently. Yeah. Um, but then the podcast idea literally came soon after I reconnected. And then it just yeah. happened that, I was so intrigued and impressed with with your work that I just I was just quite excited that I just wanted to speak to you and find out more. Yeah, about man, I, I appreciate it, man, and I yeah. appreciate you wanted to be me to be the first. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, an honor. So, um, yeah, I just if you don't mind, it would it be possible for you to introduce yourself and just tell people what you do? Yeah, so. For anyone that's listening, in, my name is Ace Ace Ruro. That's my my real name. People, some people don't believe me. My Ace is my <laughs> first, and Ruro is my middle name. And mm-hmm. I'm an actor. My full time profession is an actor. That's what I do. And from the acting that I'm mostly involved in is with creature acting and motion capture. So mm-hmm. you know, it's the, motion capture. We if, if people don't know, is a particular system that allows you to capture a person's or an object's movement and then put it into a 3d format in the digital 3d format so i've done a lot of work for that for video games for films so that's what i'm known for and currently in the last year i should say some titles i've worked on so like legend of tarzan planet of the apes vr damon 1988 uh, Dead Islands 2 marvel eternals so yeah i've, I've done i've ticked off quite a a few boxes and, and a mm-hmm. lot more to come but what I, people have also recently known me for within the last year is about my creature acting with my company creature bionics which is a practical effects company which makes things which i call performance rigs because i could never figure out what to call it whether it's prosthetic yeah. or just a prop but then a prop felt like it was too too light to <laughs> call something a prop when when yeah. so much had been invested in it so I just call them performance rigs and a performance rigs is basically a particular rig that's attached to your body and it takes the actor's performance for it to work. So recently people have seen some of the things that I've had made, which is the tail, the creature tail. I've had a mo- digi legs modified. I've had a hand mech. Some people have seen the head one recently. I've got a f- spider legs and, and what this does is it, it does a few things. My, my, the work is about, being able to, when I play a creature, I'm able to play that creature to a, a better capability because it gives me a similar skeleton, similar to the creature. So if I'm playing an animal like a tiger or a lion or an ape, you know, the arm extensions allow you to have that quadruped movement. If I'm playing a dinosaur then, or an alien, the digi legs allow you to have that weight and that 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 bent leg, reverse knee bend. So the rigs are all about doing that as well as being able to create better data for VFX reference and motion capture. So what I'm trying to do is merge practical effects with motion capture a lot. So if there is a particular creature you want to play and you want to capture it in mocap, I, my equipment helped to create that proper skeleton, very similar so that they had, so that there is less hand animation, hand key animation to do. So yeah. basically what I've ventured in some is is something that has not really been ventured in before. And when I say not ventured in before, I mean in the sense that, yes, there are, people have used particular equipment to play in motion capture and so, but have it's not really come from an actor's per- perspective as well as the fact that I make and then Pacific for motion capture. 
and I have them a range of stuff pre-made, rather many special effects or or practical effects company, they will get the budget for the project to make something. Whereas I make all of these ready and they're ready to go. And I also run classes on my stuff. So right now yeah. we're on our third class on creature arm extension class where I take 12 actors, movement performers, and they all get a pair of arm extension each and they learn how to move quadrupeds. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's a, there's a big long vision of where we're going and so far yeah. we are in the right direction yeah it, it yeah. comes across it comes across very well and yeah I, i'm just very mesmerized just because usually when i when i when i, I look at your industry it's usually i, I don't expect or associate yeah. someone from 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 our background for example like yeah. usually they they tell a minority um but i don't i hate using that term yeah but i know what you mean yeah but um that's exactly what captured my attention to you just because you're you're doing something that's quite specific and, and usually it's not something I, I would usually see so yeah. um yeah um I'm just what I've got a lot of questions but yeah man just fire like, away man yeah just to tone about I just wanted to know how it all got, got started like what was the inspiration or who was the inspiration so all right so are we talking about acting or are we talking about the creature bionics thing or, or okay yeah actually both Cause, yeah because yeah. yeah yeah actually both because that actually brings up another question that i had which was that does motion capture necessarily um require one to to be to know how to act yeah we'll get all right let me answer the first yeah. question so <laughs> yeah the first question, if I, I, as an actor, if you're talking about as an actor in motion capture, mm-hmm. how that came about is when I done the film Legend of Tarzan, mm-hmm. and I thought that I was only going to be a background warrior, and instead I was auditioning to play the apes, and I got mm-hmm. the part, and that's when I discovered about motion capture because I thought that all creatures were were done by special effects. I didn't think there was any humans playing them, so mm-hmm. when I discovered that that kind of told me all right they really do do this and that's this is what mm. I want to do because I love I'm, I'm a movement person so I love movement characters creature type of characters so for me when I realized that you could play animals and mm-hmm. so I said yeah this is where I'm going because it, if it yeah. wasn't for that I would have just gone down the action route because I'm very physical so when that came about it was like okay this is where I'm going and with mm-hmm. creature bionics how that started is because I was on a marvel set and I was playing a creature and when I realized that there were certain things that could be used to enhance how this character plays, then I said to myself, all right, cool. I'm, I've got some of this so I can do this myself. Right. And I bought something or I had something made. And then from then I was like, wow, I can, I can continue to make things, but have them already on standby rather than wait for the production. Cause I'm very about ownership. I like the fact that I want to be able to own something. So I don't have to wait for another company to bring me equipment i've got the equipment already so that kind of started creature bionics and i thought okay well how can i take it up a notch so first i focus on me and then i started focusing on how i can have other actors also be able to do it so and all that journey and and having that plan and knowing where i want to go has basically led me to where i am today yeah but is it is it something that you, you've always wanted to do? I mean... As an actor. Yeah, as an actor, I always wanted to be an actor from when I was a child. All oh, right, um, wow. From, from my child, yeah. Yeah, it was never... <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to be... I've always been... I've always been a performer from young. So okay. I started in dance. Yeah. And I never wanted to be a backup dancer because I never <laughs> wanted to be in the background. So it was yeah, like, okay, I'm going to transition fully into acting. So yeah. yeah, from young, I've always, like, not... Not the new age. Oh, I just want to be famous. I'm from young. Of course, yeah. A, I was always in my school plays and everything like mm. that. Yeah, that, that's amazing. So, um, what? Where did you have any challenges? Um, just trying to pursue that role. Like I don't know. For example, from the family side of um, perception or the industry setbacks. For example, but how for how me, easy was? Yeah. Yeah. For, so for me getting into motion capture it was you had to you didn't you don't really it doesn't drop into your lap like no one really talks 
at the point I was at the point when I got into it, there's not many people people talking about it because Andy Andy Circus made it famous, but it wasn't like a quick way to get into it. So mm. to get into it, it took me about after I done my first job, it took me about two years to really get into it because the challenge is, is that the motion capture people can play different characters. So I could play mm-hmm. you, I could play me, I could play an animal, I could play because it's not it's just your movement in motion capture. Not so mm-hmm. when it's just that. It's like the studios would just continue to use the people that they've been using before. Cause why mm-hmm. not? You know, it's not, it's not, they're not capturing their face and their exact face details. So mm-hmm. they can do that and, and work that way. So for me, it was a chat. I didn't know how to really get into that field. So you mm-hmm. do the normal thing, like sending the emails and mm-hmm. all of that. And, and so, and it wasn't until I, yeah, I started really using LinkedIn and started yeah. emailing I started directly messaging people from studios, which got me my first audition. And basically, yeah, from my first audition, that kind of set the tone for and got me into my first, then I got my agent and then I got my first game. And then, yeah, it's, and since 2017, I done my first job in 2014, but mm-hmm. I'll say 2017 was like, okay, now I'm really a motion capture and I'm really in it now, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That the, the challenge was trying to get into an industry where if you're new mm-hmm. but you ain't providing nothing different, then we don't need to use you. So the reason why, even with the I, I used to I had to brand myself a particular way to be able to get into the motion capture world. And I'd done that by being a person with the arm extensions, being a person with all the different equipments to kind of get my foot in there to be like, okay this is different. We can't get this from anyone and everywhere. So mm-hmm. that's what got my foot pushed into the door. And then from yeah. there, we are where we are today. Yeah. So um, how do you think your your role as a motion capture artist is appreciated? Just just considering the, the fact that you're essentially outputting data than getting seen on, on the big screen, for example, do you think, I mean, yeah, how 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 essential do you think your role is appreciated? I mean, I guess you you may not necessarily be needed in in all type of movies, and it's would would you say it's quite a niche space based on the type of movie that's being made and what? Needs nah, because be... most of the number one movies in the world have have motion capture in it. Right. Yeah. Marvel, Marvel, Thanos was Thanos was motion capture. Mm-hmm. Iron Man even Mm Spider-Man, like Avatar, like all of the number one films have VFX in it. And Mm -hmm. if a character is being played in that VFX, there's going to be motion capture. And if you think about it, all the fantasy, high sci-fi fantasy and adventure are like the biggest selling films in Mm -hmm. in the world. And most of them that are live action, all in fact, any of them that are live action will have motion capture in it. Yeah. So it was really is a big deal. Like, and for me, the part I believe that I play within that field, I believe it's important, especially for the animation side of the world, because mm-hmm. without the motion capture, the, the animators, they'll be working triple time as much. Yeah, Do you know what I'm course. saying? Because yeah. the, the point of motion capture is to try to capture the movement as, as realistic as possible. And then in post add to it. Whereas mm-hmm. At least when you have motion capture, you can get some natural movement. Whereas when it's hand animation, you've got to work that extra time. You've got to watch references. You've got to create references yeah. and then mimic the references. Whereas with mocap data, you create the data and then you just work off the data. So mm-hmm. to me, it's helped to change the game of how much more realness that we can get from something, as well as cut down the amount of hours that might have been needed if it was hanky animation. Yeah, so I course. do believe it's important and, and and my role in that field. And it doesn't matter in the sense that, you know, the mocap actor probably won't get the lime, won't ever get the limelight like a the mainstream actor, just like how mm-hmm. the stunt man won't get the same light, the same nice light as it. But yeah. at the same time, it's what you're doing it for. What are you doing it for? Are you doing it for the limelight? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and if you do want to get the limelight from being a mocap, then, you know, Andy Circus did do that. Mm-hmm. But, and there's possible to do it again. It's just about how you brand and 
put yourself out there to be recognized. Do you understand? Yeah. For that. So I'm in a position where a lot of times when mocap is mentioned, my name might probably pop up in in, mm-hmm. in the UK. You know what I'm saying? And especially yeah. as a as a black actor, 100 percent mm-hmm. as a black yeah. actor in motion capture, my name will come up. Because like you said, there's not many in that field. Yeah. And to be fair, I'm really probably the only one that's 100 percent in that field. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I don't look at TV commercials. I just boom, focus on my yeah. like just that's what I focus on. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So um so why do you why why do you think there's less people from from say minority backgrounds in 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 motion capture, like the the, the field of it? Um, I think there's a, there's a few reasons. There's one that the, the 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 population. You just got to look at the population mm-hmm. and be realistic with yourself. Like there's only like what five five percent black people in the UK. If we're talking about mm-hmm. UK anyway, and just yeah. in general in the world, like in the wet, like we are the less of numbers in countries that are really populated by motion capture. Mm-hmm. Africa hasn't really touched motion capture like that. You understand what I'm saying? So the yeah. countries that are touched by motion capture normally blacks and asians are going to be the the minority in numbers you know so when you have that now so you look at that section so you're talking about five to seven percent in the uk Mm -hmm. out of five and seven percent of the 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 black people in the uk how many of them want to be actors you strip that away now out of that percentage how many of them actors really want to be a mocap there's probably hardly going to be any do you understand Mm -hmm. there's there's probably going to be a handful that you can count because there's there's really wanting to be in mocap and then there's oh i like to try it do you understand what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. there's a different oh i I like to try do vfx rather than i want to be a vfx artist i want to you see what i'm saying so that's for me that's the reason why and it's not i don't think it's a race thing like okay you're not gonna allow particular thing it's because it's 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 a small world and in that small world you're not gonna get the limelight that you would get if you were on a particular project where mm-hmm. your face is being seen so you got that as well and then even as well in mocap you got to compete with the people that not compete but you have to try you have to want you have to get the people them to want to hire you over the people that's already doing it for how many years yeah, you know like if you're a vfx artist and you work with a environmentalist and an environmentalist and a and a and a lighting person if you've worked with them many times before and you know they get the job done yeah why are you going to put anybody else in that place why of course unless you meet someone that can do both of them at Mm -hmm. a different at a faster rate then you might you know so if you're not providing anything new into the mocap world and in the mocap world is like the stunt world you got the you got the the guys that are great at martial arts great at movement great at Mm -hmm. that creature great at weapons as well as got acting skills it's like okay what are you going to bring to provide? So I feel mm. like there's not as many people in it, not because, because one, it was, it's still quite on the low down, but at the same time, how many people really want to be a motion capture? Yeah. Because there's only a certain amount of people that want to be actors and then actors where, you know, where you, you want to, you're not really going to be seen. You're not going to yeah. be no big production. I mean, I mean, not big production. You're most likely not going to be on location. You're going to be in a studio you know, you got no cameras on, no big cameras on you, no team following you around, mm-hmm. no trailer. So it's just like, because of that, I think that's the reason why there's not so many people yeah, in of, course. of our, our heritage. Yeah. And touching on that, actually, um, it's it's easy to see people do it, but then normally people don't realise the, the amount of work that goes into it. So I'm just curious yeah. about what the day-to-day life is like for for you like say for example what time do you start what time do you finish like what's the top like how difficult um is the work on 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 your body for example because i know it's quite intense and yeah yeah how how do you how do you work throughout so yeah how it's how a normal day starts depending on what you're doing because then you've got there's two types of really ways of mocap is like you know there's kind of three so there's like you do gameplay so you know do the stuff that the player's doing in the game mm-hmm. 
Then you have locomotion. So locomotion is when you're doing all the movements. So you know when you're when you on a control pad and you press left, mm -hmm. they turn left, right. Yeah. You hold R2, they lift their arm up. So you got to do all of the locomotion as well. Mm -hmm. And then you've got scene work. So if you know if you're doing a scene, you know, like cutscenes in a game, mm -hmm. and you, you have to do that. So depending on what you have to do, you normally go to a studio. I say start time could be around nine. It's like a normal night, it's like nine to five. So right. nine to five, go to the studio, you get your, you get your outfit on, get marked up. You do a couple of movements in the, in the volume to make sure the system's working with your, with your movement. Then you get to, to the work that you're doing. So mm -hmm. whether it's a scene, whether yeah. it's locomotion, if you ask me what the most toughest, the toughest days in mocap is when you're going to do locomotion for different characters and it's only you in the studio. So right. meaning there's no other actor. It's mm -hmm. you doing all of these different movements. So mm -hmm. like, and, and there's no break. There's only lunch. Right. There's yeah. no take 10 minutes because there's a list of moves that we got to get through. We got to get through all these punches. We've got to do all these kicks. Mm -hmm. We've got to do these runs. We've got to do these deaths. We've got to do these turns. We've got to do yeah. the interactions. You've got to do all of these things. So there's a list that you need to do for the animation director. Yeah. And we ain't got time for breaks. So that's probably the most toughest because it's like, for me, that's like a, it's like a six hour cardio, mm. you know, it's like a six hour cardio. Yeah. So yeah. that, that's a tough, tough, that's, that's tough. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so what's, um, what's your most memorable day at work, either good or bad? It, I got two, I got two. I haven't really yeah. got any bad ones to be fair, yeah. but I've got two. My, my first one would be the legend of Tarzan. It will always be because that's the one that kind of, that's the one that let me know what, what I was getting into and it introduced yeah. me to mocap so that day when I first went on set to go play the ape and I remember before I when I, before I went on I, I would talk to myself like ace this is the time this is the time yeah. to you for you to let people know who you are like you came here to leave your mark like that's how I am I always have many incarnate in incarnations for myself yeah. before I go and do and yeah and the effect of performing stuck took me from being a background ape to playing the lines and playing the main apes in the yeah. reshoots for the mocap so for me it was like that was one of the big high points to say that ace you 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 put in your 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 work to do so and then another high point is when i was working on a marvel film and there was a scene that i had to do by myself so they could record it for vfx and after i finished it using my equipment i got a round of applause from the whole cast so like mm -hmm. the 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 the, the A-list actors and the producers and stuff yeah. like that for, for the scene I created. So yeah. that that was a real highlight. And negative yeah. one, I don't really have a negative one to be fair about yeah. work. The only one thing that really happened one time is I was I was meant to go to a hotel booked by a company. I went to the hotel, but no one was answering. And this yeah. is in Nottingham and I'm from London. So when I got there <laughs> at 1 a.m., no one was answering. All the hotel rooms were booked up completely. So I had nowhere to stay. So it was like four o'clock in the morning, me walking up and down, trying to find somewhere. Yeah. So I just went to the station, rest my head for like two hours. Mm -hmm. So I had nowhere to stay. Then went yeah. to the studio to go do locomotion all day. So there was no <laughs> excuses really. Yeah. But yeah, that was probably like one of those experiences. Mm. Like, ah, oh, damn, that was, that was kind of crazy. Of course, but apart yeah. from that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> amazing now um yeah i've seen i've seen you um i've seen i'm oh, sorry about that i've yeah. seen you <laughs> i've seen you um yeah being out in your yeah your, your neighborhood with your rigs on practicing yeah. so um yeah what what do your neighbors think about you yeah no they you know they're used to me now man so yeah. normally I'll go down one road and there's probably a woman that's always yeah. filming me when I, whenever I come and everything like that. But yeah, then they, they used to me like now. I, it always it always stops traffic no matter what. It always does. Yeah. Cars will look and peep, but because it's like, obviously they've probably not seen something like this. Yeah. But yeah, my neighbors, man, they, they're used to me now. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little spectation. Yeah. So spectating time for them when I, when I walk down the road. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a quick one. Um, yeah, what advice would you give to, to your, your younger self? or someone trying to get into, into your industry? The best thing that I can say really is, is to work from the notion of thinking about how can I get them to come to me? That's how right. I think. I think about 
you know, I'm the asset. How can I, I'm the asset. I need to invest in myself to a point where they look at me and want to invest in me. Cause that's what typically was happening. When they put money in you, they're investing in you to make mm-hmm. their project great. So I look at it from the point of view of, of how can I, instead of me emailing them, me, you know, please, hi, I do this. How about mm-hmm. I create stuff that make them look at me and be like, oh, we want to work with him. Oh, yeah. we want to work with him. You know, so it's like, even like us having this podcast, I must have been doing something that made you said, oh, I want to interview him rather than me come to you and be like, hey, can you can you put me in your podcast? Mm -hmm. You understand? I operate from that. So I say to people, you have to know exactly what it it is you want to do. What's the purpose behind it and the why? Mm -hmm. And then when you find out the why and you know what it is you want to do, you work Mm -hmm. from the mindset of them. I need to invest in myself. I'm the asset. So I need to find ways for them to see me and be like, you know what? We want to work with him. So rather than knock on their door, you build your own door, you know, mm-hmm. do stuff that make people go, oh, ish, I want to, oh no, I have to work with him. We can't find that anywhere else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's to work from that point. And that, mm-hmm. that's, that's for anything, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, even if you're a VFX artist listening, like work from the point of, okay, let me create things that make people think, yo, okay, we want to hire him. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because when they come to you, the negotiation of your pay is on your side. When right. you go to them, the pay is on their side. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't ask you to pay me a certain way, but you would ask me how much is my, my time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's to think from that kind of perspective and know that how can you offer, how can you offer what's not already out there? And mm-hmm. if you can offer what's out there, can you do it 20 times better? Not one times better. He did 20 times better. So yeah. either offer what's not already out there or offer what's out there, but on a higher scale where they think, right, this is the highest form of that, that scale yeah. possible. That's that's what how I that's how I operate when it comes to getting in anything. Yeah, that's 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 really good advice. Um, just coming back to what my one of my questions. So for anyone that might be trying to get into emotion capture, do you think being able to or knowing how to act is is really is quite important? Yeah, hundred percent. Because even if you're not being captured for, for your face or whatever, your mm-hmm. physicality is true. You know what I'm saying? Your mm-hmm. physicality is being captured. So every everything, every everything is is acting. Mm-hmm. Motion capture is acting. You know, it's just the fact that yeah, you may not be saying as much, but then you might be doing full performance and and it needs your face and your voice captured too. But no matter mm-hmm. what. Because I think people, a lot of people look at motion capture as not acting, but technically your st- any type of physical thing you are doing that is not f- off yourself and in front of a camera or any form of recording, you're acting. Mm-hmm. Because whether it's for data or not, because data can come out crap. Yeah. You could be rubbish and the data comes out rubbish. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So acting is 100% important, 100%. But is acting more important than being able to take direction? Because even if, even if you're not a great actor per se, if you're mm-hmm. great at movement and you know how to take direction, that will be good right. to understand. Mm-hmm. So, but acting, acting, anything you do in front of a camera, you, you, acting is important. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, yes, there's a difference. You, you know, you could do a lot of work post work and nobody will ever know that yeah. you know how much post work was done this is true but then the level of your acting is important because it's going to determine whether you get hired again and how much of that post work needs to be done yeah. you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. acting is very important because you sometimes have to even though i might be doing mocap i've got to learn lines for a particular mm-hmm. character so i can get the right mocap with the voice and then they just put a voice on what i've done already to understand mm-hmm. so yeah acting is important right so so then from what you're saying would, would that make sense that you'd have to recreate your data every time that um motion needs to be captured for a movie just i'm just thinking about how if say for example data can be captured and a library could be created where it could be reused yeah um, they've got libraries Right, they've got libraries. Yeah, they've but got are, libraries. are they are, are they reusable in a way, 
or are they is it easier for you to just no, do so, it? So a lot of things are reusable depending on what it is so like mm -hmm. basic certain movements like attacks walks runs they 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 they're reusable the thing that may not be reusable as much is scene work because okay. the scene work might be different the how you move might be different but then it can any, anything you do in in mocap can be used more than once and companies of course will do it you know what i'm saying okay. there's a big more, there's a bit more of a bit restriction when it comes to film stuff but video games like that okay. data's there you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so the data can be used if you took a data of me doing a backflip you can put that in in anything anything that you've required a backflip you know it yeah. could be in an action movie or it can be in a gymnast commercial it can be in a commercial you know what i'm saying so the data can be used anywhere once it's captured if it suits what it's you been used for then it will work okay yeah sure so do you do you see yourself um still being able to do this in the future um i'm just thinking about with the rise of um ai and um just simulations for example do you think that people will still be 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 needed for motion capture or, or we'll be we'll be switching more to simulations no nah, we'll definitely, nah, we'll definitely yeah. motion capture will still definitely be yeah. a thing because it's the realism of it it's the realism you know what i'm yeah. saying like the realistic movement that you're going to get from something yeah. of course when there is advancements in the things that will still be there but there's such an advancement in in online books and audios and and stuff but books are still on the shelf yeah. you know what I'm saying some people just want that original hard copy they don't want it on their phone they don't want it so yeah so even though the reading industry has changed to you know mm -hmm. kindle books and audio listening some people want the hardback so when it comes to motion capture mm -hmm. it's going to be the same thing some people are going to want that realism and it's mostly going to be the big big projects that would want it the most because it's like yeah. they, they got the funding so we want that realism we want that mm -hmm. real like of you know because there might be a walk a walk that you might need that can only be done by a pacific culture or a pacific mm -hmm. background of living and or it might only happen if you breathe a certain way you understand yeah. and the ai may not have that realism for certain things do you understand what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. it will still be here it will still be here yeah sure so um what, where do you envision yourself in the, the next five to 10 years? Being number one in the world at what I do. That's, <laughs> Amazing. Just, that's like the goal because yeah. the reality of what I'm doing is because, again, it's about setting the ground for my children and the name that I want to leave within the industry. So my yeah. plans for Creature Bionics is that we're going to get to the point where we have our own creature school, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, so like at, there's no creature school that's really about right now mm -hmm. so so for me it's just like okay we want to develop workshops and stuff where they're using our equipments then they learn how to do puppetry and then they learn how to do you know putting on a costume so i want to create a creature school which is not existing and that that's one of the big key things and then also eventually move on to supplying the motion capture data as well with our, with a mocap buying the mocap system for ourselves to be to capture rather than just going to a studio as well as creating still creating equipment and eventually i move away from performing and it'll just be movement coaching and movement performance directing to performance mm -hmm. directing on the equipments that i've made and running the school that's where this is heading to as well as developing our own production so in five mm -hmm. to ten years for me creature bionic should be at a higher much higher level rate in producing in providing equipment and actors that have been trained to use our equipment to play creatures so yeah that's yeah. that's where we go and we want to be there so far there's only us doing it like that so mm -hmm. we're just going to keep growing in that sense yeah yeah sounds good um so how how could people contact you um if people wanted to find yeah, out man, more but, yeah yeah you can easy you know you, the best places is either linkedin or my website my website is acerule.com that's a-c-e-r-u-e-l-e.com -E -E or you can find me on linkedin for the same thing acerule mm -hmm. and you can connect connect with me there all my other socials are not really really work related but you, i'm on instagram as well acerule everything is acerule my name yeah. so 
I don't really use Twitter, but I have it, but I don't really use it. But yeah, mainly LinkedIn or via my website, which will get you to my email anyway. They're the main two <laughs> ways you can see what I do and contact me if you have any kind of ideas or anything that you just you know want to want to want to share, basically. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Brother, I've been I've learned a lot. <laughs> and no problem. I've learned man. a lot and I really appreciate your time. That's cool, man. And apologies yeah. for earlier on as well. Sorry. No, not at all. Situation, not, man. No, at all, not at all. I've been I've, I've learned a lot and I'm very grateful for your time. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. man. That's cool. Thank you so much. So, yeah, bro. Yeah. Thank you.